necessarily recommend to anyone regardless of their skin type because I think it's a waste of money. This may be the worst way to package a vitamin C product or pure vitamin C product. I just basically poured money down the drain, literally. Hey guys, it's Sue. Welcome back to my channel. All right guys, first right off the bat, it's a little gloomy and dark today, so excuse the little darkness, but for today's video, I'm going to be talking about products that I will no longer be spending or should I say wasting my money on. That's right. Versus products I will be spending my money on. And this is going to be a Jutsi one. You guys know it. I don't think I've ever been through so many papers and journals as I have for this video. So make sure to press that thumbs up. But yeah, without further ado, let's get this video started. Now, when I'm not recommending products, there's always two categories. The first categories are, are products that just didn't sit well with me, specifically for my skin type. And this is not to say that they're bad products on an absolute term. No, they just didn't work for me. So if you want to know which ones are the ones that I personally were not fond of, make sure to check out my latest empties video. Now, for today's video, I will be specifically talking about products that I wouldn't necessarily recommend to anyone, regardless of their skin type, because I think it's a waste of money. First, I will be refraining from buying specific a pure vitamin C or l ascorbic acid products in specific packages such as droppers, multi bombs, and in open and transparent lids. Bear in mind that I'm not talking about vitamin C derivatives, I'm talking about pure vitamin C l ascorbic acid products. So pure vitamin C or l ascorbic acid is an amazing ingredient if your skin can withstand Standard. And luckily, my skin loves it. I love vitamin C products. It has so many benefits backed by science that it will be such a pity to miss out on. And these benefits include being a very potent antioxidant and it also helps with sun damage, anti-aging or slow aging. And so it helps with the appearance of wrinkles, sunspots, etc. However, it is a very fickle and difficult ingredient to work with just because how unstable and fragile the ingredient is. And so there are many factors factors that can lead to its debilitation or oxidization, including UV rays, oxygen exposure, and water exposure, which is interesting because 99.9% .9 of skincare products have water in them. So first, let's take a look at these vitamin C products that comes in these droppers. Now that I think about it, and as I was doing my research for this video, I realized that this may be the worst way to package a vitamin C product or pure vitamin C product. Like I literally Googled, why do brands keep on making vitamin C products in droppers? It just, it just doesn't make sense. Thing is, straight off the bat with these droppers, every time you open it, the content or the formulation comes in full contact with with air exposure and like I said air or oxygen is one of the things that oxidizes and makes the formula unstable thus decreasing the potency of these products also most l ascorbic acid that comes in these droppers have water in them water is the main ingredient and the thing is water is another factor that oxidizes the formulation and that's just really ironic because that means that as soon as formulators create or making these batches the vitamin C starts to oxidize immediately and that's why even if you have stored your vitamin c in the back of your drawer you know it's shut tight when you open it you will see that it still has oxidized and that is because of the water that's in the formulation also did you guys know that sometimes with these vitamin c products formulators will deliberately put in ingredients other ingredients that have a natural yellowish hue tint to it so that it's hard for you to tell if the product or the formula has oxidized and there are other packages with these transparent lids and this obviously first does not block out the UV rays it does minimize air exposure but I feel like with these products, you would have to use it really fast because of this transparent lid. There are also multi bombs and toner pads with vitamin C, pure vitamin C in it. And all the packages, they're just so open to the oxygen and they don't really seem to block out everything as sufficiently. And let me just talk about SkinCeuticals, which we know is one of the high-end products, very expensive vitamin C products out there. And I'm just like, I don't know. This is one that's very old. You can see like the dropper has gone crazy. I don't know what's going on here, but I have the store in the back of my drawer and I hadn't opened it, but because of the water content, you can see it's already oxidized. And so this has 
I just basically poured money down the drain literally and that's why I said I wouldn't want to waste my money on these products especially just because for me I'm always testing out so many products at the same time so I need my products to be stable for a longer period of time so what will I be investing in instead from now on I will be purchasing vitamin C pure vitamin C products that come in an airtight pump packages without any water in the formulation such as these two Ta -da! or I will be just using you know uh, vitamin c derivative products like the 107 one which you guys know i love so i have these two products this one is from benton this is their vitamin c serum and then this one is the elmt pure vitamin c 20 percent element both of these have once again airtight airless pump packages and they don't have any water in their solution also both packages block out uv rays and in the formulation they've also incorporated a lot of ingredients to stabilize vitamin c so with the benton one they've included vitamin e or ferulic acid and tocotriano and glutathione and ectoin so all these other ingredients to stabilize vitamin c and with the elmt one it has waterless formula that suspends finely milled vitamin c uh, in the air i know the technology is kind of cool with this one but it ensures that the vitamin c is activated once we apply it so that is a very very interesting technology going on here now what's also further interesting is the formulation of these two especially with the bentum one first the pump is very rigid and very stiff but i think it's part of the technology to keep out any oxygen exposure but the formulation it feels almost gooey creamy and you can feel a sensation of warmth when you apply it it's kind of cool it's nothing hot but it almost feels steamy and according to the brand it is because of the waterless factor of the formulation that makes that creates the steam like sensation and it just melts into your hands effortlessly it doesn't feel greasy or oily at all but it does feel pretty I guess gunky in a sense <laughs> so this is what I've been using every single day day and night in my routine with the ELMT one it's a little less gunky you can see that it kind of pumps out way easier and also the formulation I, you still do feel a little bit of that gooey factor but once again this also spreads out very very nicely and also guys make sure to put vitamin C onto your hands as well and top it off with SPF just a little tip here here while we're at it so these types of vitamin c are the ones that i will be investing and spending my money on from now on next are collagen and peptide products first let's talk about collagen ah yes collagen now i will say i will continue to buy them as humectants as collagen has very good film forming properties and they do make a great occlusive they are a great humectant the Innis free cream one which you guys know i absolutely love i did a sponsorship with them back last year it's honestly one of my favorite products from the brand I think it's fantastic however I will no longer be purchasing any collagen products with the hopes that the collagen in the product will actually increase collagen production and make my skin more plump because it does not work that way and that's why when I did the sponsorship with Innisfree I made it clear that I won't be delivering that kind of message in my videos I was like hey I think your product is great with the ceramide and I think the product itself is great to fortify the skin barrier and thus leading to a healthier and more plump looking skin but I don't personally believe that the collagen in your product will specifically target the dermis increase the collagen production of my skin and they were really okay with that they were like that's fine and I really do appreciate that because not a lot of brands would have said yes to that and so kudos to Inis Free. I think they are doing a great job now there's no doubt that when you look at them as single ingredients that both collagen and peptide have great benefits for plumping up or helping with the elasticity of the skin for example there's a specific peptide called i'm butchering i yeah i'm gonna butcher this palmitoyl pentapeptide and this peptide can specifically increase the collagen production in the dermis but the more important question is can 
and this peptide, specific peptide, travel through the epidermis and land in the dermis where it needs to be. Yes, we're talking about skin permeability. This is the biggest question people have in mind when looking at peptide or collagen products. And it basically refers to whether these ingredients can pass through our skin. I think by now everyone knows that collagen, it's way too big to pass through our skin. You guys know an ingredient needs to be under 500 Daltons to actually seep in, but collagen is way too big for that. And so nowadays, I don't know if you guys notice, what brands are doing is they're releasing products with liposomal collagen or collagen in liposomes or low molecular weight collagen, so tobunha collagen. So let's take a look at these two. First, a liposome collagen. If you guys didn't know, liposome, they're not active ingredients themselves, but basically just imagine them as a pocket of fat that will encapsulate these active ingredients these act like carriers so that the active ingredients can pass through our skin better and enhance the total delivery system if you will and when liposome comes in contact with the skin it gets absorbed in with the with the active ingredient that it was carrying so in theory it maximizes skin absorption so ideally it sounds perfect really but let's take a look at the science behind it there are studies done to look at the efficacy of these liposomal collagen however most of that the majority of them are carried out by cosmetic manufacturers and this means that they're very biased because of course they want these ingredients to work so that they can continue to make them and put it out into the market and a lot of these studies also seem to include the words like possibility feasibility enhance there hasn't been a very conclusive statement from especially from the studies that I've read you know which nonetheless these words are very used in a positive way but but let's be honest, there's nothing concrete about them. Also, I was very curious as to how big these liposomal collagens were in terms of Daltons, like their molecular weight, but apparently manufacturers or do not disclose them, which I'm not surprised by really. Now let's take a look at low molecular weight collagen or tobuna collagen, which is another tactic that a lot of brands have been employing in their marketing. Basically, low molecular weight collagen, hydrosylate collagen, or hydrolyzed collagen all mean peptides. So now let's look at what science has to say about this ingredient. Peptides are short chains of amino acids that are the building blocks of certain proteins needed by our body, including collagen and elastin. And there are four types of peptides. There are signal, carrier, neurotransmitter inhibitory, and enzyme inhibitory peptides. And when looking at the peptides as ingredients, singular ingredients themselves, they also hold so many benefits and so, so much potential to help with the elasticity of our skin and some of these benefits include antioxidant anti-aging or slow aging um, anti-inflammatory and antimicrobial so it holds a lot of potential however despite whatever type of peptide it is a lot of studies point out that peptides are not the most ideal ingredient because once again of skin permeability can it pass through the epidermis once again this is due to the fact that peptides are also way too big to pass through our and they also have other characteristics like their pH level their temperature their hydrophilic nature that make it very very hard for them to pass through our skin our skin for example it's hydrophobic it does not like water that's why we're in like taking a shower we don't like melt and like we don't absorb all the water that we get. So although on the cellular level, peptide does show a lot of benefits, without the ability to actually permeate through the skin, it will render, everything will render it being useless, right? And because of this, there has been a lot of research going on to find ways to better enhance the skin permeability. And these include chemical ways, physical ways, and encapsula encapsulation ways, sorry. So people are looking to liposomal methods, like the ones I just talked about, or microneedling or using like these frequencies to help it further get absorbed into the skin but the truth is that we still need to see more research and more results to really see whether it has solved the skin permeability of peptides now at this point there should be a certain question popping into your brain at least it had in mind then why do brands keep on making collagen and peptide products despite the lack of science especially with the skin permeability challenge 
challenge. Well, first you have to realize that the peptide and collagen market is huge in the cosmetic industry. As a matter of fact, peptides account for 10% of the sales of pharmaceutical uh, companies, which amounts to $25 billion. So it's a huge market and you guys can see for yourself, there's a lot of peptide, there's a lot of collagen products out there, and most of them are pretty highly priced. Once again, these products do make great humectants, but do I think they're worth that price markup, especially when I when it's not guaranteed that they will actually pass through the epidermis. The industry as well as consumers ourselves, we are in love with the idea of what these ingredients can do for our skin. I mean, heck yeah, I would love it if peptides and collagen worked, you know? And so I think this equation that collagen peptide equals elasticity, this equation has been ingrained into our brains so deeply, so widespread that brands want to free ride off of this. Because one thing you guys have to know when it comes to product development and using new ingredients is that when brands do incorporate new ingredients that people are not aware about, they have to spend extra money educating people about these ingredients, which might include paying influencers to do collabs or doing more commercials or doing more campaigns. And that is just more cost to them, which means more risks. And with companies, you guys know their, their number one priority is to maximize profit. So that's why a lot of brands do not like using new ingredients. And that's why you see all so many brands using hyaluronic acid. So many brands use, I don't know, green tea. So many brands use HA, BHA. And while there's so many benefits to these ingredients as well, there is another reason why all of the brands use the same ingredient. They don't have to use that extra money to educate because we already know hyaluronic acid equals humectant. Green tea is antioxidant and calming. Zika and centella is also calming and regenerating. We all have these equations down in our skin so bad, so it's easier for brands to work with. And collagen peptides is another ingredient that people associate elasticity and plumpness so much that it's easier for brands to just be right off of that and make easy money. So I'm just like, eh. I don't know guys, <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that. I understand coming from a business point of view, but for as a consumer, a skincare fanatic as myself, I don't know guys, I don't know. It feels a little iffy, you know? Okay, so what will I be buying instead for the plumpness and elasticity for my skin? I will of course be spending more money on vitamin C, retinol or retinol products, and SPF. And I will be doing a separate video exploring which ones are the best to work with, which ones work better for my skin. So if you guys want to see that video, make sure to let me know in the comments down below. All right guys, that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope you guys found this helpful. I'll list all of the papers and journals that I I've read and that I referenced for this video down below in the description box so you can check it out for yourself if you're interested but yeah let me know if you guys found this video helpful fun useful <laughs> all right guys I'll see you guys in my next ciao